Hey family, we are so excited that you've decided to tune in and join us this morning. Now church is going to start in just a few minutes and there are a few things that we wanted to share with you to make today the best possible experience. One, everything you need for today's service, the message notes, the worship song set, even the links that we will direct you to during our service can all be found in the description area of the stream under the video. Again, we really want to encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel, C4 Church Hawaii, and make sure your notifications are on. That way you're up to date and notified anytime we are starting service, anytime we are uploading our latest sermon, or sharing an encouraging worship video and content. Last but not least, we want to encourage you to share this with a friend. There could be someone whom God has placed in your heart at this very moment who needs to hear a message of hope. So go ahead, share with them right now. We are so stoked that you've joined us this morning and can't wait to worship with you in just a few moments. Well, good morning, church. Welcome to C4. Would you stand with us this morning as we welcome the King to worship today? Come on, church. We can put our hands together. Woo! This Jesus that carried our shame, this Jesus who rose from the grave, same Jesus. We worship today, we worship today. Came to us, grace and in truth still with us. And still on the move, the same Jesus is making us new. He's making us new, yeah.
beginning and end at the sound of his cry all the world came alive and he formed us from dust put a breath in our lungs we were made for his love but we ran from the light and he couldn't give up on his daughters and sons so we took up the cross and he laid down his life and he did what he said when he rose you in this place would we continue to worship you with our hearts walking around these walls I thought by now they fall but you have never felt for change to come knowing the battles won
promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail your promise still stands great is your your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me yet never failed us yet. so faith Let's take a situation in our life that we need God to move. Just with your eyes closed or whatever it, whatever you got to do to just grow in faith, I want you to put that circumstance, that situation. I've um, just, just been reminded of how that one, I think it was a dad or something, was saying, I don't know who it was, but he was like, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. So Father, we just take this circumstance, we take this situation, Lord, we just lift it to you. Father, we believe that you can move in that situation, move in that heart, move in that broken relationship. God, you can do it. But you know, Jesus said, hey, if you speak to that mountain, the mountain will obey you. And so God, we just speak life to this situation. We speak resurrection power right now. We do ask you, Father, but we also do our part. We speak life into it. Where there's death, we speak life. Where there's brokenness, we speak healing right now. God, we repent, God, for our unbelief. We repent that we've let this thing get on our heart or unbelief creep in or we've given up. God, we re-engage our spirit this morning. Um, in every area of our life, God, we thank you. Hey, we just want to do some family business real quick. I just want to invite Katie Nicole. We call her Auntie Keeks as well as every kiddo in this place, all of our keiki. Um, if you guys can come up to the front as well, some of our leaders and our ministry team is coming up. We're gonna be praying this morning and just wanna invite you guys to affirm the anointing um, and what God has done in Katie Nicole's life. She's gonna be stepping into the role of kids ministry director and I'm gonna be partnering with her. Um, and I'm going to be partnering with her as the family ministry director, as you guys also know the vision, to work with parents, to work with families. Um, but I want you guys to get close so that you guys can um, put your hands on her in just a second. Um, Katie Nicole has worked with kids for many, many years. She's worked in kids' ministry. She's worked professionally with kiddos. But most of all, I would entrust my kids into her hands, and that's really the thing that gives me the boldness and confidence, and I want you to have that. Listen, I'm a parent. I know what it's like to say, who am I entrusting my kiddos to? It's in their spiritual life, their growth. I know it's just a small part, but it's an important, important part. And Katie Nicole has a foundation, even when she was young, memorizing scripture, encouraging young people in the, in the word of God and in the spirit of God. Um, and so she's just going to share just real quick about her heart, and then we're going to pray for her. He stole it. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so just like Dean was saying, um, I really understand the value of the foundation of each kid having a relationship with Christ from such a young age. Um, and that's just something that I really want to be able to continue to help encourage them in as they uh, build their relationship with Christ, as they come to know who he is in each one of their lives and just the love that he has for them. Um, because if they know who he is at this age, then as they go about their lives, um, it's that much more impactful. And I mean, the course of their life changes at that point. And even the fact that um, I have a few examples where it's like there's one kid in a family that transformed the whole family. And it was because of that one kid that the whole family started coming to the church or whatever it may be. 
And so I know like each one of these guys and each one of the kids that we have in our kids ministry and even like out there um, that it's just, um, it's just crucial. It's essential. And so just super excited to continue to walk through what God's going to be doing with each one of them. Awesome. You know, many of you know that we're doing Restoration Life. It's a program um, here, and we, we talk about going back to some things that the enemy came in when we were young and lied to us. Um, and so, you know, as an adult, and you guys know, we work through so many issues. Well, what we get to do and what Katie Nicole gets to do is make sure that those lies never attach, that those hurts don't get in there, that she can be someone who can speak life and prophesy life as well as our incredible ministry team. So let's extend the hand. Are you guys good? To say, okay, let's extend a hand um, towards Katie Nicole. We call her Auntie Keeks. Father, we just release, um, Lord, your anointing. We thank you for the power of God resting on this woman in a special, unique way. God, so that she can minister to. God, that she can break off lies. That she can open the word of God. Lord, that she can open the ears of our Kiki to hear Jesus in a powerful and unique way. Father, we thank you for her. Will you protect her, God? Will you guide her and keep her, Lord? And we just affirm the anointing in her life, God. We affirm what you're doing, and we celebrate her today, God, in Jesus' name. Can you guys just give it up for what the Lord is doing through Katie Nicole, through our kids? All right, so she's going to walk out in the back. Keiki, you guys can follow her in our ministry team. If you guys want to greet someone next to you, give a little high five. Thank you guys so much for praying for us and our families. My name is Brett. I get to serve as our pastor of innovation and youth here at C4. We just want to take the time to welcome you to our weekend worship experience. On behalf of our entire family here at C4, we're so glad that you're joining us this morning. If you're tuning in online, please visit our website, c4.church. On our homepage, you'll see a bright blue button that says connect with us. Just go ahead, click it, enter the information, and we will contact you in a timely manner as soon as we can. And if you're joining us in person, there's a physical connect card and a pen in the seat pocket right in front of you. Go ahead, fill out the information. You can drop it in the offering buckets as they pass by or the brown box mounted on the wall to the right of the doors as you exit. If you wanna complete it digitally though, go ahead and scan the QR code on the screen. You know, if you're wondering how you can get involved and connected beyond the weekend service, there are a lot of opportunities and events happening in and around our church for our youth, men's, women's, our kupuna, and so much more. So to see how you can get involved, we invite you to visit our website and on the home page, click the events tab to view our events calendar. This is where you can easily see all that's happening here at C4. You know, we're so glad that you joined us today and we hope that you are blessed by today's experience and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Come on, give it up for Pastor Brett our pastor of innovation and youth here at C4. And so good morning, church. Good morning. want to welcome those of you who are joining us online as well, wherever it is or whatever time of day you're tuning in for church this morning. Uh, if we've never met before, my name's Chad. I have the absolute honor, you guys, of serving you as your teaching pastor here at C4 Church. And everything that we do here, our purpose uh, at C4 Church is centered around this one statement. You might hear us using it kind of often. You actually saw us using it uh, over Katie Nicole this morning as well. But it's this thing of helping people pursue the freedom to be all that God has created them to be. And that's exactly what you saw us release Katie into and in the coming months as well. But that's the same for you as well. We'd love to help you uh, pursue that freedom in Christ for your life as well. And so this morning, we're going to continue in our time of worship uh, through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And as the ushers come forward, I just want to highlight one thing uh, before I pray. And it's this thing of our Freedom Culture Campaign. How many of you here were last week? You were here do you guys get that flyer on the way? If you got the flyer, put it in the air real fast for me. 
Five of you, or, or you're using it to fan yourself. Awesome. Hey, listen, <laughs> on the way out this morning, make sure that you grab a flyer for our Freedom Culture campaign. If you missed it last week, all we did was highlight three areas that God has really impressed on the leadership, our leadership here at C4, that he's saying, listen, you guys, this is the direction that I want you to pour into. So as a family, that's, that's what we're doing, and that's what this campaign is all about. It's centered around Kupuna. It's centered around our families, like you saw earlier, and it's centered around this thing of restoration life where we're helping people find healing in Christ. And so again, just wanted to highlight, if you're continuing to give, you can go online for that. You can use our mobile app. Uh, just make sure that you see Freedom Culture campaign if you're wanting to sow in uh, because again we just want to make sure that if you're if your heart with God is to give towards that that it's going to the right place all right so make sure when you give you see freedom culture campaign let's pray Father, we just thank you, God, again, that you're a God of abundance, you're a God of provision in so many ways, Father, physically, uh, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and even financially, God. And so would you allow us now as we worship you through our giving, God, would you take what we're able to give, Father, would you multiply it and use it to advance your kingdom here at C4, but beyond our walls, God, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I want to let you know about a couple things happening inside of our church and in the kingdom of God at large. And the first one is centered around young women, uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers. Again, middle school, high school girls in specific. And uh, to help me do that, I'm going to invite up Auntie Tammy Moniz to share a little bit of the heart behind this. Thank you, Chad. I wanted to do the I wanted to do the video so I could go like this, you know, like do the QR code, you know. Anyways, um, one day during Fresh Fire, one morning, I felt like the Lord just dropped me like a zip drive of information in my lap. And um, pretty much the whole day um, was given to me. Um, it's on November 11th from 9 to 9 p.m. And it's for girls 7th to 12th grade. Um, it's a time when our young women can come together um, hear testimony, come and worship together, come and share in a message. We have three times of message and worship time and ministry time. Um, we have a dance par party in between on our break time. We have lunch and dinner. Um, we have free giveaways. And um, when, I, when I was 17, I, I got saved. And God just rescued me my whole life. And even to today, there's not a time when I can sit in a room like this and be so thankful that I was given a chance for my whole life to know him and go through the ups and go through the downs and the dust with him. And he is so faithful and been so faithful and I really believe that um, he wants our girls to have a chance, you know, and, and one little moment can change a whole lifetime like he did for me. So if you know anybody that's 7th to 12th grade and, um, I, you know, like have them, have them introduce, you could give them my number. You could get my number from any leader here. I will talk to them. Um, they can know the Lord. They may not know the Lord, but it's okay, you know. And God, God's going to be there, so I want them to be there. Uh, we are having a sign-up and a free T-shirt if they, if they um, enter by tomorrow. Um, the, the high school girls are the ones that say, let's have a t-shirt, let's have a t-shirt. I'm like, oh, my God, you guys are making this harder for me, you know. <laughs> it's like, I thought this was easy. This, here's the plan. Just do it. And it's like, oh, my God, no, you know. Anyways, it's going to be amazing, and um, we're really excited. So, yeah, Can thanks. you help me thank Auntie Tammy Moniz again for sharing the heart? And absolutely, man, I love what she shared. So, again, there's something like 12 different churches, yeah, Auntie Tammy, that are coming to this thing. And so no matter what church they go to, no matter if they're just a high school friend, they play on the same soccer team, whatever, I would encourage you, invite them to this event. And again, free t-shirt. Come on, somebody. You sign up by tomorrow, get them in, just tell them you're going, and then you get to keep the free t-shirt. I don't know how that works. But absolutely. Speaking of uh, girls, uh, high school women, we have a state champion yeah. volleyball player. Can you make it up? Give it up for Maya Aiken and the Iolani girls. Come on. State champions. Had me screaming at the TV on Friday night, I think it was, that you guys were playing. I was like, yes. 
And so, again, uh, just highlighting, God is doing some amazing things uh, in the teenage girls, specifically all teenagers. But, again, highlight this event. Uh, make sure that they're there. The second thing I want to highlight is for Marketplace Leadership, uh, our MPL Breakfast Series is going to conclude this coming Friday. And, listen, we got two of the best but two of our own, you guys, sharing uh, at this event. Come on, make some noise for Dean and Tim Savage. You saw Dean earlier. But again, this is for C-level uh, business leaders. If you know anybody, get them connected. Dean and Tim are actually going to be sharing about the power of storytelling and digital media and just the influence that you can have in that space. So again, if you know any business leaders, C-level leadership, uh, make sure you invite them to this thing. But reach out to Pastor Creighton. His email is on there, and he'd love to be able to get you guys connected. All right, That's happening this Friday. But happening this morning, everybody say this morning. We're co uh, continuing in our teaching series, again, worshiping God through the teaching of our word. We're in this series called Freedom Culture and just highlighting the freedom that we have in Jesus. And so this morning, we had the privilege and the honor to hear from my sister, from another mister. Pastor Tiva is bringing the word. Would you help me welcome her up this morning? Thank you so much, Pastor Chad. Ready for this morning. There we go. Got them tissues ready. It's such a joy to get to be here with all of you this morning, and wow, yeah, we're excited. You know, how many of you know that worship did not end a few minutes ago when Isaiah strummed that last chord on the guitar? No, worship is now. Worship is still happening. We're encountering his presence. We're ministering to his heart. This is so special to have all of you here today, and it's a joy. It's an honor. So good, good, good morning. Good morning. I do have to mention, family, that... Today is my birthing day, okay? It's my son's 15th birthday, but it's also my birthing day, um, you know, and I want to show a picture of that amazing day, his birthday. Let's take it. No, 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 not that one. No, 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 the other one that I emailed. That one, yes. <laughs> wow. He's 15 today, and here's, here's what, he, what we look like together. Yes, there he is. He's so sweet. 15, and, um, you know, he's not allowed to date till he's 18, so I'll be taking applications when he's 25, uh, but he's, he's a great kid. Happy birthday to my, my, my awesome son. Love him so much. Yeah, it's week three, week three of our freedom series, um, Freedom Culture, and, you know, we're not talking about seasonal freedom or freedom that only lasts in the good times, but it's this freedom, right, that comes from Jesus. And it's so much more than a feeling of freedom. It's not a lifestyle of freedom either. It's knowing exactly who we are. We are discovering who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and then living from that. And it's just miraculous freedom, freedom that sets us free. And so, yeah, today and we're, re we're investigating the heart of, the, of our Father God, his heart for freedom. And, you know, Pastor Chad said when we first started this series a couple weeks ago, he shared with us, right, that freedom is a, anybody remember freedom is, oh, it's right there on the screen. <laughs> freedom is a journey. It's a journey. And, and that's the definition we're anchoring on. And wouldn't you agree with how true that is, that we are looking to God and how to get free on this journey, what's the process, right? And that we would be people, a culture of believers, a, a family of faith that would just cultivate and nurture a culture of freedom, not just in this community, but that it would just be so beyond these walls and that we would be people that live from that freedom. And so do you believe that you're free? Do you believe that you're free? And, you know, maybe you're here this morning and you're a believer, you're a Christian, and you believe, yes, I'm free in Christ, but maybe you feel stuck in some way. Do you believe that Christ is the one who sets you free? You know, it's believing that we can be free from these things that often have us stuck. And what do I mean by stuck? What keeps us stuck and not free in the way that God has designed? Well, a few things that come to mind perhaps is fear. We talk, we've talked about that, right? This being I'm stuck in fear. Like we know that we're free in Christ, but sometimes just fear of the unknown can creep in. 
Or maybe it's like fear of, uh, of that this broken relationship within your family might not ever be restored. And so you're, you're, you're walking, you're just, wow, I'm free in Christ. Like, Lord, you've set me free, but like, I can't, I'm stuck in this place of fear. Or maybe even like the elections are causing some anxiety for some of us. And it's like this fear that's just, you feel stuck, right? Or maybe it's like being stuck in people pleasing and this, this performance. And um, we, can, we can see that in and around our, you know, just, it's, it's everywhere, right? Just this seeking approval of man. And maybe for some of you here, you might even be honest with yourself today and say, you know what? I feel stuck in, in and maybe you struggle with lying. Maybe there's just this, um, maybe, you know, just, I mean, I, it, let's just be honest. Like where you find yourself stuck in some of these patterns, these unhealthy patterns, or maybe it's not lying. Maybe it's, it's anger or it's depression or perhaps like this sorrow, like deep, deep sorrow, sadness, the kind of sadness that you're, you feel like your faith is slipping. And you feel stuck in that space. Or maybe you would say that, you know what, I'm, I'm stuck in some, some lustful thoughts, lustful actions, and maybe temptation has got you stuck. Or maybe this morning you would say, you know what, Tifa, I feel stuck spiritually, and I'm just discouraged within my spirit because I want to experience the deeper things of God, but I feel like I can't. I feel like I'm stuck in this unworthiness. I feel like I'm stuck, like I'm, I can't hear God, and I feel stuck but I want the deeper things of the Lord. I want the deeper things of the Lord. And you feel stuck. And you know, these things that I've mentioned, and there's, there's more things, of course, but these things that I've mentioned, you know, these are the repercussions of a bus-up world, right? I mean, these are just the things on this journey to freedom, on this journey to knowing the one who sets us free. Like, whoa, this journey, there are these things that um, can cause, cause those feelings of being stuck in. And we're going to just keep pressing into this, just this journey of, to freedom. And John 16, 33 says this, Jesus said this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Would you continue on with me? Ready, go. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Yeah. Amen. I read this verse and I'm like, yes, I believe that. I believe that, but yet, why is it I'm still gripped with certain things that have got me stuck? Like, I can't, I'm free in Christ. I know what I have in Jesus. Why, why do I feel stuck? Why do I feel stuck? You know, and some of the things that I mentioned, and those things resonate within your spirit, and you long to have the peace that Jesus brings. You long to know the peace giver, the Prince of Peace. We long for these things to be lifted off of our shoulders. We long to believe. We, we long for the mind of Christ. For those of us stuck in unhealthy, these are the things that trap our, our mind and it can consume our thoughts and leaves us in this place of just weakness, maybe even feeling burdened. And you long, you long for the peace of the Lord. You know, I'm going to be honest with you today and share with you, you know what has kept me stuck? When I look at, you know, over the course of my life, I've had various struggles. Anybody else? Various struggles? <laughs> you know, and for me in particular, it's actually unbridled anger. And you're looking at me and you're like, not Tiffa. Like, I'm sharing this with you, with you and you're completely shocked right now. <laughs> like, no, Tiffa's always happy. She's always joyful and she's always laughing. Well, I laugh so that I don't cry. I laugh so that I don't cut somebody. Like, I, and I'm, and I look at the, like, from when I was a little girl, like, like, hair pulling, like, anger. And, um, you know, there's a righteous anger. And then there's, like, an unrighteous anger, an ungodly anger. And I'm looking at that. And I'm like, wow, Lord, like, you are my peace. You are the, the love of my life. I love you. I worship you. Like, I know you're my freedom. I know that I can be set free. But why is it that I'm, I'm finding myself stuck in this again? Like it comes back again. And, you know, when I get angry, you know, in the, when I've looked at my life in the, in, over the years, it has often turned into harsh judgment against others or it has hurt my family and it fosters like the self-righteousness and even pride. And, and then it can like turn into this self-judgment. Like, oh my gosh, Tiffa, why did you blow up again? Why did you screw up again? Like, get it together, Tiffa, get it together. And, and, I, and, I, and when I harbor this anger, you know what? I tend to build an army too. I'll be making my text threads like, girl, 
girlfriend and girlfriend number one, number two, number three, sisters, dot, dot, dot. And I'm prone to like gossiping and prone to hurting the ones I love. And you know, this leads me often to being stuck, stuck. And it affects so many parts of my life. And you know, in these moments where I've had this unbridled, um, ungodly anger, It's the kind of anger that keeps me from looking to God and instead I'm looking at myself. Like, I don't feel so free. Yet John 8, 36 would would tell us, tells us this. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. How many of us know that verse? We've heard that verse. Many of us have known that verse, memorized that verse. This is the words of Christ. Jesus said this. So we know this verse, but you know how often I've responded to this verse? free indeed, I don't think I can beat this anger. I mean, this is a generational thing. I have a strong family line of rage, you know, so this is going to be hard. Maybe I can hide it. Maybe I can fight it. I mean, I'm Tifa. I believe in Jesus. I believe that I'm free in Christ. But why does anger have such a grip on my life? Why haven't I beat it? That's how I've responded to that verse. Who the son sets free, you free indeed. Oh, but then why am I putting the burden on myself to free myself? as if I'm the one who sets myself free. It's not me. It's Jesus, right? It's the Lord. But here's what I've been, wow, this is where the Lord has been really ministering to me and teaching me about this, is that I'm wrestling with unbelief. I'm wrestling with the unbelief that I will be free, that truly the Lord is the one who sets me free. Like, I I can sing songs about freedom. I can teach you about freedom, read scriptures about freedom. But am I going to know this for myself, like truly, like truly, and I've been just ripping this apart like all summer long, and I have been just pressing into, into f- true freedom. Like I, I want to know it, know it. I thought that I knew it, but then like there's more to encounter, right? There's so much more to encounter. And so yeah, today we are hitting the process to freedom. Like this is part of the process that, that we would wrestle with our unbelief. And that's what I'm inviting us to today like that we would wrestle with our unbelief. When it comes to the areas we find ourselves stuck, there's a root of unbelief there, right? You you get what I'm saying? Like if we can wrestle with this unbelief, bring it before the Lord, like really wrestle with it. In the wrestling, it's uncomfortable. In the wrestling, it can be hard. In the wrestling, we have to, we really are yielding to the Lord. And and so, yeah, that's what we're hitting today. Um, Just just, I want to encourage us this morning that this is part of the process to getting free. And so, yeah, let's just, let's be really real because there are parts in our lives, I believe. We, you know, we would say, right, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the blood. I believe in his resurrection. I believe that he's coming back. I believe the goodness of God. I believe the Bible. I believe, I believe, I believe. But maybe, just maybe, there are portions of our lives where those beliefs haven't taken ownership, Right? Anybody with me struggling with that maybe or, or have? We're going to wrestle with unbelief. We're going to wrestle with unbelief. I think that for many believers, we are finding ourselves in places that are stuck, that are keeping us stuck. But we're in this, again, it's a series on, you know, freedom culture, but it's not just going to be over once this series is over. This is a lifetime of freedom to be discovered in Christ. And, and it's beautiful. You know, as I've been thinking about, like, just wrestling with unbelief, you know, my kids, they wrestle with unbelief. They do. You know, I, I told, you know, you ever give your kids some instruction and they don't listen? They don't believe your words? You know, it's best for them. And they, they, they you know, I mean, we were all kids once. So I, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I tell my kids, I'm like, I get you, but you don't think that I get you, but I get you. Like, I get you. Well, I, I told one of my kids, I won't mention which one, might be the birthday boy, maybe not the birthday boy. But I said, hey, <laughs> hey, take your jacket to school today. It's raining. You're going to be cold in that AC, in that classroom. You're going to want your jacket. No. Child intentionally leaves jacket at home. No, I won't need it. Child comes home. Oh, yeah, mom, it was really cold. I wish I had my jacket. Why you never believe me? I told you, take your jacket. <laughs> Unbelieving generation, how much longer must I? know? <laughs> but family, this is the invitation to more. More freedom. And we are going to wrestle with unbelief. You know, for many of us, I too 
had this mindset where sometimes I would think that I couldn't approach God with my unbelief. Like, that is such a lie. We need to approach the Lord with our unbelief. And in approaching him, wrestle with him. He's not afraid of our unbelief. He's not intimidated by our doubt. He's not. So we're going to wrestle. We're going to wrestle today. We're going to wrestle today. So, yeah, let's, let's pray again before we jump into more of the word, the scriptures today. Jesus, Jesus, we, we fix our gaze to you, Lord. We, we turn our affections to you. We turn our attention and our thoughts to you right now in this moment that, yes, we are continuing to worship through, through our ears, listening. We're, we're continuing to worship you through the, the reading of your word. And, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing and that, God, you are the freedom. You bring the freedom. You are the freedom. And you are the one that we have on this entire journey until you call us home. And then even beyond that, we get to be all caught up in your glory and in your presence. But we get to be caught up in your glory and in your presence on the earth, on earth as it is in heaven. So I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this house, online and in person, Lord. The move that you're, you're doing, your spirit is, is, is dancing throughout this place and touching our hearts. So Lord God, we are pressing into freedom and show us what it means to wrestle with our unbelief, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a story that we're going to look at today, and it's actually, it's been a long time favorite Bible story for me, and it's in Mark chapter 9. I love this story. And it's the story of the desperate father seeking Jesus, the healer. This is the story of his wrestling with his own unbelief. So I'm going to read this for us. It comes out of Mark 9, chapter 14. And it says this. And when they came back to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately when the entire crowd saw him, Jesus, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you disputing with them? And one person from the crowd answered him and said, teacher, I brought you my son because he has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and he becomes stiff. And I told your disciples so that they would cast it out, but they could not do it. And he answered them and said, oh, believing, oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when he saw him, when the boy saw Jesus, the spirit immediately threw him into convulsions and falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often thrown him into, excuse me, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to kill him. But if you, but if you can do anything, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. Take a deep breath with me, fam. You know, reading this story, our attention is brought to the sun, right? This, he's, he's like the main attraction in this story, right? Like this father is bringing his son to be healed. And so our attention is on the, fa- on the son. But I'd like us to think about the father for a moment. Think about how this father, how he might have been stuck within himself. Think about that. Perhaps stuck in fear. If you think about having to constantly worry about death and life and these seizures that would provoke his son's body to harm. I mean, when we looked at verse 22, it says that the unclean spirit, this spirit of infirmity would throw the boy into the fire. So if you can imagine with me, we can perhaps think about they would have open cook fires. And if the son is walking around and begins to have a seizure, this spirit of infirmity would thrust him in. He would be having a seizure in the fire. Like that's terrifying, right? Right? And then the father also said that his son would have these convulsions which would occur around water. How scary to be having a seizure in the water. I mean, it's just, you can imagine perhaps the fear this father was stuck in. Not only fear, but also shame. Because culturally, when 
your child was sick in those days, in that culture, they would often blame the parents. Like, oh, you must be cursed or you must be, it's the parents' fault that your child is not well. So can you imagine the societal, just that, in that kind of, just being stuck in that shame, perhaps, fear? And what we see in this passage, you know, it's talking about symptoms. These symptoms that the boy is experiencing, you can hear those symptoms and think like, okay, I think he has epilepsy. And you might say, well, that's a physical condition. But what might that have anything to do spiritually, right? But one thing we got to understand as we're looking at the scripture is that when it comes to the word of God, it's saying that something is happening in this boy's life of the spiritual realm. It, it is. And, and it, made me, it got me thinking about it in this way. The places that we feel stuck in life must be wrestled in the spirit must be wrestled in the spirit. And so, yes, amen to that. And so you see this man bringing his boy to Jesus, bringing his son to Jesus. This father desperate to see his son healed. You can imagine the kind of freedom this father would encounter as he would bring him to the Lord. Like it says, we read that the Lord was always, he was moved with compassion. When people came before him bringing their sicknesses, bringing Jesus their, their issues, Jesus' heart was moved with compassion. So can you imagine? He's bringing his son to the Lord, anticipating something to happen, right? Wow. And this story is wild. And so we are going to read the rest of it. And again, remember that the last part of verse 22. The father says, if you can, Jesus, if you can. Well, here's Jesus' response. Verse 23, let's read, ready, go. But Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. And immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. This is so powerful. Let's focus again on the father. He must wrestle with his unbelief in this moment. Like Jesus is saying, right? If you can, like, bruh, you came to me. You must have heard something about my nature and my character if you're bringing your son. Like, of course, I don't think Jesus had that much sarcasm and, um, you know. But I can just imagine, like, the Lord's just like, come on. Like, if you, yeah, but if anything is possible. Anything is possible. And then the, the Father's genuine, honest response, I do believe, help my unbelief. You know what he's confessing in this moment? He's confessing areas in his life where it's not surrendered. Areas in his life where he, he doesn't believe. Like perhaps maybe, he, you know, intellectually, the father is like, okay, intellectually, I can, I, I've heard you're the healer. Perhaps he even saw a miracle. Maybe he, he obviously, the, the word of Jesus was circulating around. And so he brought his son to the Lord. And, and so, yeah, intellectually, I've seen, I've heard of you. I've seen, you know, that this Jesus, that you do the miraculous. So intellectually, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help my heart and my spirit to come into full agreement with who you are. Because I'm struggling with unbelief. I'm struggling I'm struggling. Help my unbelief. You can just imagine his voice. And so we're going to read the last part of this story. Whoa. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that a crowd was rapidly gathering, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out. That spirit of infirmity came out. And the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him. And he what? He got up. Amen. He got up. Mm. I feel like a chorus in that. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, thank you. Gotta just take a moment got up. Ooh, Lord. He got up. And we go back to verse 21. And Jesus asks the father, remember he asked, how long has this been happening to him? Jesus knew how long, but he's pressing in onto this father's heart. How long has this been happening to him? 
And he said, from childhood. And now we just read, he got up. It comes down to this place. Like, how long has this affliction been happening? How long have you been stuck? How long have you been wrestling with unbelief? And Jesus is zeroing in on the father, asking him this question. And then we just look at the end of the story and Jesus says, how long have you been struggling with this? How long has your son been sick? Well, now do not enter him again. It will not come back. What a contrast, right? A lifetime of being stuck, a lifetime of sickness, a lifetime of fear. But now up until this point, no more, no more, no more being stuck. I mean, just, this story is just amazing to me, right? Is it amazing to you, too? I'm just in awe. Excuse me. Woo! I always do this. You guys are used to me by now. If it's your first time, um, I don't apologize. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, it's all good. Where do I put it? On it? What kind of jacket doesn't have? Oh, pockets. Here we go. But Whoa! Jesus healed the boy. And how much would the boy's father have to wrestle after that? He would know. He had tasted and seen that the Lord is good and the Lord is faithful. And, um, and I think this is one of those moments in life, he, it would be unforgettable. 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 And I want to encourage you with this. And when you think of the word encourage, it literally means in courage. So this morning, I want to put courage in you. You know, as I was lifting us up in prayer this morning, I asked the Lord, I said, Jesus, what do you want for your beloveds? What do you want for your beloveds today? And and I heard his voice and he said, I want them to know the living hope and I want them to be strengthened. I said, okay, in Jesus' name, it will be done. I'm here to encourage us. I'm here to encourage myself. And you know what? If you're stuck with something in your spirit, and you've got thoughts like, this is too hard to overcome. I'm desperate for change. I, it is what it is, or I'm flawed, or I might not ever be free, or I don't hear God. He doesn't speak to me. If you have ever doubted your freedom, your freedom in Christ, if you've ever doubted your freedom, I'm going to say it again. If you have ever doubted your freedom, I'm inviting us into this space, right? I said, wrestle, wrestle with unbelief. And it's really simple. We're going to be people who will ask God, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. In fact, even right now, thinking of this space where you might be stuck or someone you love is stuck, would you begin to even press into the space and say out loud right now, help my unbelief. If that's you here this morning, you would say, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. And here's, you know, family, the choice is yours. The choices are yours. You can take a step. In saying, help my unbelief, you can take a step and begin to wrestle or you can just stay where you are. Are you going to wrestle with your unbelief or are you just going to let it go? You know, it breaks my heart. Over the course of my life, I have known people because of one experience in their life, they gave up their faith. They chose to not wrestle with their unbelief. They chose to not bring it before God. Instead, they walked away from their faith. It breaks my heart. We don't want to see that happen in anybody, in this place and outside of this place. Amen? Like, we, we don't want just our experiences to turn us away and keep us stuck. We actually want to move. We want to move into this place of wrestling, wrestling and saying to the Lord simply this, help my unbelief. Look what the Lord did in that story with this father and his boy. And how beautiful, how honest, this precious dad, help my unbelief, help my unbelief. You know, looking at the fan of life, so to speak, <laughs> it be, it's throwing some things at me that I wish were not so. And I'm talking like real time, current events, and I'm choosing in this place to step into wrestling with unbelief. And you know, I mentioned earlier that one of my struggles over my life has has been anger and unbridled anger and just that that unhealthy yucky place and but in recent weeks I've sensed that I've been really learning God's heart for me and I've been walking in so much more freedom in this struggle more than I've seen ever in nearly 40 years like I'm blown away 
that I'm experiencing so much breakthrough. Up until about a couple weeks ago. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hold on, fam, hold on. So, and I believe the Lord asked me to share this today. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I received some, some, some surprising news that there was an incident or a series of incidents that happened at my children's school um, where you could perhaps put it in the category of bullying and or harassment or some, that sort of thing. And, um, and my, one of my children was the victim of this or the, the person that's dealing with this um, onslaught of whatever it was. And, and, you know, I'm a mama bear and I control, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like, I, I know things happen. I know that there's going to be struggles and raising kids and things of that sort. But like, whoa, this did something different to me. This particular trial was so hard for my spirit. And I found myself in this place of unbelief where I was like, Lord, are you going to make a way? Are you going to make a way? Because I'm feeling stuck in my anger and I'm, I felt like I was going to lose it on someone or something. And, and I was wrestling with this, bringing it before the Lord. And the reason why it was really such a hard struggle for me, and I think this is where it kind of tipped me off, was that um, the demeanor of my child had changed. And um, that is hard when they can't see themselves in the ways that you've raised them to see themselves in. And they're struggling. And so, yeah, Mama Bear was mad. <laughs> and then, thankfully, the school has been wonderful, and they've partnered with me to, and my husband to restore and all the things, and they're, they're outstanding. They're great. Super thankful. Yet, I'm getting mad because they're not moving at the pace that I want them to move at. And then, right, remember I mentioned how my anger would turn into judgment and harsh words? And now I'm thinking about this other kid and this other family, and I'm getting even madder and madder and madder. And the Lord said, they are not the enemy. So I took a deep breath in, processing through this week. We come down to now it's Thursday, like last week Thursday. How many days ago was that? Like this is recent. I had a totally different story I was going to share today about <laughs> surrender and unbelief. And, and, the, and I'm like, I, honestly, though, I struggled with sharing this with how personal it is and how recent it is. But I, I, the Lord has covered me. Your grace with me in this. You're my church family. So, of course, I'm going to come run into you and share because we're on the side of victory. We are on the side of victory. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting to that place of victory. Bear with me. Okay. So it's Thursday. The Lord is telling me they're not the enemy, dot, dot, dot. And then I get a call, um, and I was told that my child smiled for the first time in two weeks. You'd think I'd be happy. That made me more mad. <laughs> mad in the sense of like, wow, my happy, my happy baby. You know, it just sucks, man. And, um, you know, this is my child, and, but sometimes, like, harassment and like this bullying thing it's not just in our kids some of you be bullied by your bosses or or by your you know your peers or and you're a grown adults like and you feel stuck so anyways moving along it's now um last night <laughs> whoa <laughs> when i say that i've been wrestling i've been wrestling but it's okay i get this good report child is smiling restoration's happening the other family, everything is, is moving in a place of healing and good things, right? Because that's what the Lord does. Amen. That's just what he does. So I show up. We actually had an event Saturday night at the kids' school. And, um, and it you know, fundraiser, yada, yada, whatever it was. I'm with the kids. We're having a good time. I'm sitting at the table. And all of a sudden, spiritually, I'm telling you, I felt this physically. I felt like a 40-pound bag rice was placed on my shoulders. And I was like, Whew. And all of a sudden, the rage started coming back. I'm like, oh, crap. I thought I was over. I thought, it okay, whew, Jesus. I'm still wrestling? Guess I'm still wrestling, okay. 
wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. But I, I could feel like this moment where I'm like, okay, I'm about ready to grab my kids. And, and it wasn't anything that was necessarily triggering it. It was just being in that space and actually seeing perhaps the location of these things. And so I'm getting mad. And this precious mama, a new mom that I met, she comes walking up to me and she goes, she just comes, she sits in front of me and she sits, she looks me straight in the eyes and she says, how are you? <laughs> and I said, sis. And then I could feel that weight get heavier. Like physically, spiritually, this, oh, it came back. And I said, I'm about to lose it. And I feel very weak. And I feel like, come on, Lord, when? Help me. Help my unbelief. Like, sis, I'm struggling to believe right now. She looked at me. Again, this is last night. She looked at me and she said, Tifa, did you think that your kids wouldn't be given an opportunity to see the Lord as their victor? Did you think that they could get through their school years without a struggle, without having to press into the Lord? Did you think that? At the end of that last word, boom, the weight left. The weight left, and the peace of the Lord came. Again, it's a journey to freedom. <laughs> it's a journey to freedom. Help my unbelief. I'm choosing to step into wrestling with unbelief. And it's every day choosing. It's no longer saying I don't believe, but it's saying I do believe. Or rather, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Somebody say, help my unbelief, if you're in agreement with this. And I'm going to wrestle with God because I have this place of unbelief. I need help. I need Holy Spirit. You need Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit. We need Jesus. We need God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. He's the one. He's the one thing. He's the one we need. Okay, I'm learning. I'm learning. Thank you. I'm learning. I'm learning what it means to press I'm, and not choke, but press. <laughs> I'm learning what it means to submit my life to the Lord and to resist the devil and he must flee. That's James 4, 7, I think. I'm learning in real time, in real time <laughs> on this journey. And I'm so thankful for the Lord's grace bigger than I could have ever hoped or imagined because I can sing a lot of songs about freedom. I can jump in in this message series and try to inspire you guys to freedom, but it's the Lord who's going to walk this out for you. But we're going to either choose to wrestle or we're going to choose to stay put. I don't want to stay put. I don't want to get caught up in my own self. Because here's the thing, we ask God, help my unbelief. And number two, we wrestle with unbelief with others. I had an opportunity to, when my dear friend asked me how I was doing with that authoritative voice. Sometimes you need a sister to call it out in you or a brother. And I had the choice to say, I'm good. I can put on a fake face. I'm great. Look at these pumpkins. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> And I could sip my boba and just enjoy the evening. I could stay put or I could wrestle. Oh, that's why it's so important that we wrestle with our unbelief with others. Like we bring it before the Lord. We bring it before others. And look around you. There is such a community. There's such a precious community. And so we're going to, go, we're going to pray and um, the worship team will make their way up in a moment. And as we, as we, right before we pray, I, I just wanted to remind you again that the heart of our Heavenly Father is that we would be free. He paid for it. He paid the highest price. So he deserves the highest praise. His nature and his character and who he is, he wants us to be rooted and grounded in that. This is for you. This is for me. And you maybe you've heard these stories. Okay, well, Tifa, that's great for you, and I'm so happy for you. And you've heard other testimonies of great faith and great wrestling. And, 
but maybe you just don't want to try again because being stuck has actually become more comfortable for you. So in order to, like, to step out and wrestle with unbelief and actually wrestle with the Lord is going to take courage. It's going to take faith that you might feel you are empty of. But God has this freedom for you. And your freedom will not look like my freedom per se. Like We all have our own experiences in our own lives. But our faith moves the heart of God. Our willingness to wrestle with our unbelief moves the heart of the Father. We're not going to cycle back into bondage. We're moving forward. You've been told stories about freedom, right? Well, now you want to see it for yourself. You will see it for yourself. But step into wrestling with your unbelief. Wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. And maybe you'd say, but I can't take one more shot then that's why we do it with community. There's so many ways to get connected with brothers and sisters of faith. To just, I couldn't do it alone. I've tried. Even in a community of wonderful fa- family and friends of faith, and yet I would still try to do it alone. No more. I'm going to wrestle with my unbelief with others on this incredible journey. Freedom is a journey. Let's pray. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you for the freedom. The freedom that you you paid for, Jesus. The freedom to know you, the way, the truth, and the life. Your word shows us. Your word teaches us your heart for us. We can see your heart laid out for us. So today, Jesus, we are going to choose to partner with you. We're going to choose to wrestle with our unbelief now. Yes, we may begin this journey maybe when we get home tonight or after lunch. Maybe it's a lot to really think about in this moment, but we can actually say, help my unbelief. We could actually start the process now. We don't have to wait. You are present with us in this process, Jesus. And in these places where we have found ourselves so stuck and plagued by the snares of this world, by the spiritual enemy, oh, that your word, oh, that your truth will be so much louder than the lie of the enemy, that the lies that would say that we can't beat this or that we'll be stuck forever or or whatever it may be. Jesus, you know the hearts of every single man, woman, and child in this room. You know exactly where they are. You see the areas in which they are stuck, and you have come to set us free. You have come to set us free. So even right now, as we profess with our lips, help my unbelief. Even right now, family, begin to say it. Help my unbelief. Jesus, you're coming in a way that only you can come in. You're You're coming in a way, you're moving in a way, and you are breaking chains right now. You are breaking chains right now. And I speak with faith, I speak with joy. As you're doing it in me, so it will be for my friends and family in this room. So it will it be for those watching online. So will it be for those who might see the stream tomorrow or next week or a year from now, whatever, Lord Jesus. You have come that we might have freedom. You have come that we would have life and life abundant a life of abundant, and that abundance comes from knowing you, that joy comes from knowing you, that joy comes from choosing you. So we choose you. We choose you. Tell them, we choose, I choose you. I choose you. I choose freedom. I choose to wrestle with my unbelief. I I choose to relinquish my unbelief in Jesus' name. And I want to address those in this room who may not have said yes to the Lord. You've been coming to church or maybe it's your first time or this is your first time wrestling with the thought of salvation, like salvation in Christ. You've not given your life to the Lord because maybe you are stuck in whatever it is. It could be shame. It could even be like just 
you are you're an intellectual person and so you want to be able to see the evidence you want to be able to tangibly like know that these things are true well i want to invite you to this place of deep faith deep deep radical faith picture with me if you will there's this door of salvation right there's this door. Jesus even says in his word, I am the door. There's this door of salvation. And for many of us in this room, we've actually stepped into that door of salvation. Like we've actually said yes to the Lord. We've stepped into that place. But then we might, maybe, just maybe, you just stayed there. You stayed at the door of salvation and it's a good place to be. But there is more to discover beyond the door. Like there's more freedom to encounter. There's more just joy, liberty, and love. Like I'm talking about, when I say liberty, I'm talking about that freedom to dance before the Lord, to come before Him unashamed. It's like, whoa, yeah, maybe physically dance, but I'm talking like your soul is on fire. Your soul is free. Like that invitation is for you. It's for all of us. But if you have not yet said yes to the Lord, You have an invitation right now. You have an invitation right now and the Lord knows your heart. He can see your yes, he can see your heart. And maybe you would, you can raise your hand or not, but I I wanna pray for you. And if that's you, we're just gonna, with our voices, with our words, we're going to acknowledge. And in that space, you're saying, I believe. If that's your heart, if you're gonna jump into faith, would you, Um, Let us close our eyes as we pray. And if that's you, you could raise a hand and I I just wanna see you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Messiah, I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart. I want to know the one true God. And so today, I'm going to place my faith in you. I'm gonna choose you. Even though everything within me may try to pull and tell me that, tell me no, I'm gonna choose you in, right now. I'm gonna choose you, Jesus. I say this out loud as a statement of faith so that those around me can hear. I know you hear me. And I say it out loud so that I can hear myself. Jesus, you are my Lord, and I place my faith in your hands today. I choose to wrestle with my unbelief today. Today, I be marked by freedom. Today, I would be marked by salvation. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, heaven's rejoicing, right? Thank you, Lord, for those of us that have turned to you, God. Bless you, Jesus. So powerful. As we move into this time of worship, would you just stand with me, please? And I just love our heart or the assignment that he's given us to pursue the freedom to be all that God created us to be. And I'm so proud of what he's doing, even in the pastoral staff and in our leaders, that he's called us to be humble servants, to go first. And the word that comes to mind is that my grace is sufficient. This is what he's speaking to the leaders, that in your weakness, I will be made strong. So I, or we, will boast more gladly about our weakness so the power of Christ may rest on us. So we're just expectant of freedom to move in our community. And I love Chad's reminder and exhortation to all of us to go low, that the leaders are gonna go low. So we just thank you, Lord. I just pray your faith would arise, that there would be this identity that begins to overflow and impact our hearts then out of who you say we are, not just in our minds, but in our hearts, that something of freedom will begin to break in our lives. We cast off our compulsions and addictions 
and we choose to receive the freedom that you have for us. So have your way in us, Lord. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Come on, if you believe something's going to break, can you make some noise this morning for the Lord? I believe, but Father, help my unbelief. Hey, before we wrap up our time here this morning, I want to share one more thing. I love how Tiff referenced uh, in Genesis chapter 32, Jacob wrestled with God. And it said it re he wrestled until the break of day, meaning that they were wrestling for a while. And it says that, he, that, that the man said, hey, just go, let's, let's be done with this. But here's the thing, Jacob persisted. And he says, no, I'm not going to stop wrestling until you bless my life. Can you see that? Because for some of us this morning, actually, for most of us this morning, we're not comfortable in that place of wrestling with God. But it's going to be the persistence that maybe I might not see the results I want to see today. It may not happen tomorrow. But can I tell you, family, that as you persist in wrestling with the Lord, I believe that you will see the same results that Jacob saw in his life. Ultimately, the Lord ended up blessing Jacob. And what happened was, is he said, I, I captured this moment and I named this place that I wrestled with God. I name it Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life has been delivered. That's the promise that of what we're believing in. That as we begin to wrestle, we will see God face to face. Can you imagine that? You know what happens when you see God face to face? When you step into his presence, things have to break off. Anything that is not of God cannot exist in his presence. Amen. And so our unbelief, our fear, our shame, our anxiety, all of these different things have to be broken off in Jesus' name because that's just who the Father is, our loving, good, good Father. And so let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that it's your goodness, that it's your Son, Jesus, that has set us free. And though many of us continue to wrestle through these things, Lord, we ask for faith in this moment. In the hour that we want to give up, we ask for faith to, per to continue to press through, God. That we would see breakthrough in our lives, God, that we would see generational curses end right now in Jesus' name, that our children and our children's children would experience your blessing and the goodness of the Lord in their lives, and that we would see, Father, a change in culture, that we would see freedom in the islands, on earth, as it is in heaven. So give us courage this morning, God. Let the things arise to the surface that we need to bring to you to wrestle. That we believe, Lord, and that you would help our unbelief. We ask these things in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Hey, come on, amen if you agree with that this morning. a couple of things before we, uh, we we release you. Hey, next week is communion, so I just want to say that all of you joining us online, uh, please get your communion elements ready. We'll have it. If you're here in person, we'll have it ready for you. Um, the other thing is, hey, if you're in need of any sort of prayer, we want to build a culture like Tifa said. Hey, we want to share these things with each other. Part of it is sharing, but also praying that God would move in your life. Our prayer team's going to be up here in the front, and they want to pray for you. We'll, some of our pastors will be up here as well. Please come up to receive prayer. And hey, we love it if you would partner with us in this Freedom Culture campaign. So you should have gotten a flyer. If you didn't get one, please see some of our hosts. They have it um, on our way out. But hey, family, we just want to bless you. Have a great week in Jesus' name. <laughs>